Oh Lord, what are we looking at now? Ooh, tape deck. Tapes. Cassettes. The compact cassette is an amazing, amazing thing. And I'm loving it. Uh, I picked up the one guy not too long ago, the, the actual tape deck. And, uh, yeah. Great zoom on this camera, by the way. Awesome stuff. We'll get there. Picked up the tape deck, finally picked up the receiver. Receiver's awesome. Also a Technics, and it drives my speakers, which I found that I've got a problem with. So, that's why there's no music. Of course, you wouldn't hear the music anyway in a video. But, that's not the purpose of this. The purpose of this today is a quick tour. I've been busy gathering junk that I'm going to turn into not junk. And so I just thought I'd give a quick tour of what's going on in this mad scientist shop. I'm not a, I'm not a scientist, but I am mad. <laughs> um, workshop, we, it's not a laboratory, it's a workshop. Vocab words for third grade. <laughs> anyway, when I got the receiver, I went to the house of this nice old lady. Her husband had passed a few years ago and that's his receiver, which was in immaculate condition, and his tape deck, or another tape deck is his. And I got this tape collection. Check this one out. Now, I don't know who Eddie Arnold is, but look at this tape. It's in, it's in a cardboard case. RCA, printed in the USA, the best of Eddie Arnold. I haven't listened to any of these yet. Um, they're pretty old. Let's see what's on I don't have my glasses on to read copyright. 1966 RCA Records. I don't know what that's in the cassette. There's some oldies in here. Um, Jimmy, Johnny Horton. Can't wait to listen to that one. Jim Reeves. A lot of Ernest Tubbs. Jim Reeves. Um, there's the banjo band. Oh, Roy Clark and Buck Trent. I haven't been through this yet. That's awesome. I love Roy Clark. Roy Clark's one of my favorites. So, look at that. Now, this is... Uh, 1978, and it actually looks like it might be, might be okay. And like I said, I was at the house of the, where this guy came up, where this came out of, and it was beautiful and immaculate. I opened up the receiver, there was like 11 hat, cat hairs out of it, that, that was it, there was no dust, it was beautiful. So I'm gonna go through these tapes. I've got this other pile of tapes that I've gotta go through that I've been meaning to go through for a while, but I haven't had the right, right system, so. I, Listen to them. I've been tossing out all the tapes that don't sound good, that are crappy. I've had to clean my heads a thousand times, but it's okay. Uh, this one's got a bunch of stuff in here. It's James Taylor. Ooh, Kenny Loggins, Return to Pooh Corner. I mean, if you're, you know, that's kind of a weird one, actually, to tell you the truth. I don't, I don't like this. If you have cassettes, keep them in the dang cases. This, yes, that's safe, but it's completely uncollectible, and these things suck, and I found that... They really do degrade more when they're not in their cases. Or maybe it's just the fact that the people that lost their cases didn't take good care of their tapes to begin with. I don't know. We've got some Journey in here, some Rod Stewart. I've already been going through this stuff. Weeding out, throwing a bunch of stuff out, putting them in a keep pile, putting them in a throwaway pile. We're going to be doing some stuff with cassettes pretty soon here. I'm not sure exactly what, but... Now, we'll take a... Peru's down there. Let's see how so much I can do this without moving the camera with the bad zoom. But this is Technic speaker. That these are mine from the '90s. I got a pair of them. The other one's up there. And I always kind of heard something wrong with one of them, but I couldn't quite put my finger on what the problem was. And I was I've been driving these things with a really, really crappy old house radio thing that just sucked for years. And so, finally I got hooked up to the, to the good stereo, and the thing, they kick, they drive really nice, they still sound awesome. Uh, I had to put a brace up there because they were rattling off the, the shelf, which I thought was great. I mean, not rattling, but they, they started, started moving a little bit because they were moving, but something wasn't right. So I pulled this one down, I started doing a left-right comparison, there's just no travel coming out of this speaker at all. And obviously, no, I can't. You're gonna just take my word for it. I'm not gonna move this one over here, but you look at this crossover and you look on the capacitor, these things are just gooed everywhere. 
So, of course, that's fine. You know what? Because there's no dry rot, the, the speakers are fine, everything's good. I just have to change the capacitors. Now, here's the funny part about that. Of course, you know, when you start into this, you need to start getting, gathering supplies, and I've been buying switches and little doodads and whatnots. And I haven't bought any capacitors or resistors or anything. I've been waiting until I needed to. So now I need to. And I said, all right, I'll just go buy a kit. So I wrote down the thing. I went inside and looked it all up. Of course, they're using the old school numbering system. And maybe it's times a thousand, maybe it's not. So whatever. But like, I can't find anything in any of the kits that match that voltage and that, in that um, uh, capacitance. Uh, so, okay, what do I do now? And so I started digging around. And finally, I found... So I couldn't buy a kit. I couldn't buy... Just individual ones either. It was really weird. So finally, I found on eBay some guy in China selling these things that said they're Panasonic for audio crossovers. But I didn't want to wait three weeks for a little pack of these things to come from China and make them not be the right one or anything anyway. So I went on to Amazon and Lord Bezos, of course, was able to accommodate me by selling me a pair of crossover units for $12 and they'll be here in two days. So uh, that's one of the projects that I'm going to be working on coming up as we go forward. Uh, that's the first one. As soon as that gets here, that's going in and then put it up there. And I'm going to see how it sounds. I might swap out both of them. I might not. I might just hold the other one until it comes. If they sound okay paired, then fine. If not, then I'll, I'll change them. And I think... I don't know. We'll see. It's an experiment because I don't know too much about audio and I don't know what the crossover units is. You know, it's a, these are 200 watt speakers and that's a 130 watt crossover and there's a, you know, 85 watts coming out of there. I, so I don't know. I, I don't know because I don't know enough about it, but I'm going to figure it out. All right. So a couple other things that's going on. This stupid thing started lighting up like a disco ball. Now this is, yeah, it's gross, isn't it? There's a, there's a, UV little blue like bug light in there, bug zapper LED. So and then there's a regular LED and it's a night light. So you put this in your thing and you switch it on once. The blue light comes on. You turn it off. You turn it back on. And then the night light comes on. Well, this thing started just strobing the other night in ridiculous fashion. And so, but the night light still works. So I'm sure there's a bad transformer there. Maybe? I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We're gonna tear it apart eventually and uh, see what we got. All right. So that's cool. I do have to move the camera here, so let's see how this goes. I didn't practice this part, moving the camera. All right, this is my buddy's old boom box that he gave me. This is the tape deck out of it, and this just sits down here like so. And then this comes up here like this. See, they kind of look like a boom box now. All right, so, by the way, heavy. These speakers are heavy. This is a General Electric something something super stereo system, five watts per channel. Um, this is basically, a, I, 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 I'm not sure exactly what's going on with this because it's, it's obviously the super radio has a cult following so I was able to find a lot more information about this. But this appears to be of the same, the same, uh, time period uh, and and from what my buddy said I think he said he got this in the in the early to mid 80s he's a couple years older than me so it was one of those things uh, he was telling me last night everybody all wanted the Sony's and he got the GE and this is when GE actually made good stuff these are heavy duty mag magnets these are uh, five watt speakers made in Japan these these uh, these little guys here say uh, Korea marked on them I saw some Taiwan in here and and mostly Japan though um, a couple of USA stuff in here, but uh, so the problem there's a problem with the tape deck, and uh, it's tough to move because I don't have it unhooked properly. But there's one belt. This is the motor. The motor runs. By the way, if you press play, it, it powers and it runs, and the, and it spins. So that's good. And then there's this belt here that runs the fast forward and the rewind and everything, and but there's no belt from the motor to this big one. So that's that's the that's the kicker. I gotta figure out how to get this all apart, and I'm not sure yet, and I'm trying to be sensitive to it because these dang wires, it's not giving me any slack, and I don't know where to, I don't know the easy part to disconnect yet. So I gotta figure that out, and I gotta get this off. I might take off the heads, actually, but I think something tells me not to take off the heads because they're aligned properly, and I definitely don't want to do mess with these cable systems, desoldering wires here because there's, 
a bunch of them and twisted pears and all sorts of stupid stuff that's very delicate I don't want to get into that if I can help it um, otherwise it, it's also very gross in here but the other thing is over here um, let's see, I can see this. I don't, hmm. Over here. Now this runs on AC power, but it doesn't run on DC. And it has a 12 volt input jack and, and uh, eight D cell battery slot that, you know, is 12 volts and they're connected together and they run, I haven't figured it out quite yet, under this board, into this board somehow. It runs on AC, but the DC doesn't work. Now here's the transformer that comes in here, and those wires come over here, and I'm not sure, you know, it obviously flows through here and out comes electricity somewhere. But if you look, these capacitors are And somehow that's causing, that's causing the problem that it's not DC. So, I, I don't know. I don't, not sure about that. Um, what I have to do, but I have ordered those capacitors. And of course, they don't come in a kit either. They're some kind of weird, old-fashioned special capacitors. So these pots and switches are actually not bad. Uh, there's not much crackle in them. And I probably won't have to do anything to them, although they are gummy and gooey. And I'll probably get in there with, like, some kind of toothbrush. But I won't, I don't know, I may not take it apart as much. Um, these are, these are okay. And I'll just clean them, and they should be fine. And then the other thing is that... Over here is the input output board. And uh, these right here are actually RCA jacks, so inputs. And there's an aux for this. So we've been talking about, you know, well, do we want to put a Bluetooth in there or something like we did with the super radio? And so I think it's very easy because it's already set, set up for an auxiliary. Um, and these are microphone jacks, I think. This is a really nice radio. Um, and he said it's bumping. The other problem is that, well, you can't see from this side but he ended up cutting a pole in the back because the string to move, the, the, the dial to move, the AM, FM thing on the outside turns one direction and it turns, but when you go the other direction, it doesn't turn. So you have to go in there and turn it on the actual wheel to make it move. And that's obviously not proper, although he's been doing it for 20 years. And uh, it just looks like that, that cord is a little uh, stretched out so we're gonna try to put that together that's that's I've been looking at this for a while so now I'm just give a quick motion to there I'm not sure what to do with those transformers those came out of those power lights they're heavy and I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna figure out a way to turn them into money somehow without too much trouble I was looking at a thing and I don't know I might just take them to the scrapyard and get the quarter piece for them and, you know there's 25 pounds or 30 pounds right there and that's not a lot of money, actually, but I don't know. I'll figure it out. Um, and then this, look at this thing. This is an old radio that I picked up last weekend going around on my on my rounds, and I'm going to show you the case in a, in a minute, but there's the front side, and here's the back, and it's an old tube setup, and I don't really want to get into to doing this. I mean, and it's, it's from the 40s or whatever, and look at this with the wax paper and the capacitors. This is all the original... This is all original stuff in here. I mean, that's gorgeous. And it's, but it obviously doesn't work. There's, the tubes are blown, and I don't know anything about that. And I probably could go and just change a bunch of parts and change things over, but I'm not sure. And I'm going to leave it alone because I have a thing for the case. I have something to do with the case. So that's what's on that side of the bed. Now, over here, where we're normally hanging out, This is a case. It's beautiful. Bakelite. Motorola 610. 6X110. Let me change my camera. There we go. So I can see too. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool, I guess. But I'm not a tube guy. But what I do have is this beautiful shell. Obviously, it's dusty, but it's one piece it's all nice that that this piece of cardboard oh the washer fell off this is the back side this is like the antenna this wasn't it was one thing that i had to desolder these two wires this is the loop antenna for the for the radio of course it was am only and otherwise 
That whole unit that I just showed you came out of this in one piece. This is very beautiful, but, and I'm gonna have to clean this up a little bit. And I'm not sure what the staining is. Obviously something was sad. I, I, so, I don't know. Uh, soapy water usually does the trick on YouTube when I watch the, all the guys that do that. Um, but what I want to do with this, because obviously I can't fix the radio, and let's face it, AM FM radios are kind of bad. We've talked about the Bench Supply project, which is coming along nicely, parts are streaming in from Lord Bezos, and I'm about ready to do this. So we're gonna take this guy, and look at this. This is incredible. This is incredible. The fan, it's, the fan, everything lines up, lines in there, just like that, perfectly. Um, I have this leftover panel board, then I'm going to cut the fit. This is flooring, actually. So I'm going to cut this piece of flooring to this. And then use this as the front, as my bench power supply. So this beautiful Bakelite thing. But what I'll do is, if I can make this look nice, I'll display it turned around this way. You know, when I'm not working, it'll just look like this nice old radio. Or and then when I turn it around, We'll have this wood panel with digital readouts and banana clips and all the power and we'll have 12 volt, 12 volt connectors and regular 12 volt power, you know, connectors and USB chargers and then we'll have bench power for 3 volt, 5 volt, and 12 volt with an amp meter and then we'll also have variable power and it's going to be a very nice thing that I've been working on designing in my head. I've watched about 100 of the videos about everybody else putting together a bench power supply from an ATX, and I've been waiting for the proper case, and I've been waiting for the thing. The only thing that I don't know what I'm gonna do is how am I going to attach this to this, because I do not want to screw holes into this. I don't wanna put any holes into this actual 180 year old uh, case, because that's all one piece. You know, that's a metal grill that could pop up, but I don't wanna do, anything to that. So I'm thinking maybe um, building like some kind of, huh, you know, and of course the thing is on this side, if it was on this side, then we could figure something out. But I'm thinking about maybe building a little, little, some kind of little bracket where it's like one here, one here, and one here, and I don't know, like an old thing, and then slide, and then it's gonna slide in, and like hot glue it in. And the, or you know, even double-sided tape or something silly like that, and this just so it doesn't move. And then everything else will be attached to the panel. That that's my uh, that's my take on it, and that's what that's the way I'm planning on doing it. There's so much of this. I, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I'm really excited about that project, and that's probably gonna be one of the first ones I I tackle when I really get into projecting. Um, last one here. <laughs> Look at this guy. Isn't he cute? It's a supersonic. What does he do? He's a TV, he's a portable TV, AM, FM, auxiliary, and he runs on 15 volts, DC, dunk a dunk This thing down here, all this is, is a D-cell 15 volt battery case. It just, you plug it in, you plug, and then you can use rechargeables, it comes with a power supply, so you plug in your power supply, into here directly and go, or you plug it into here and then this goes up to here to the bridge and then this can come right off and you can have a small tiny little TV. This works, this is in color. I pick up radio stations with it and uh, obviously I can't pick up any TV stations in America anymore because it all went digital um, and there's no analog stations to pick up, but it's just the cutest little thing and in bonus, it's in color. It's color, so I didn't know it was color when I got it. Um, I got this from um, the guy, a guy who gave me this at the same time. And this is just a little baby Genesis. It's got like 80 games in it, but it's got a full, real Genesis cart slot and you can take put real Genesis controllers in here. This is um, actually probably my favorite of the, of these that came out like the Mini NES and the Mini NES NES. And I'm not even a Genesis guy, but I like the fact that you could, that it had the cart slot and you could use a real classic with a nine pin along with these stupid, these infrared controllers actually stink. Um, but that's fine, it's not a big deal. 
um, because you can use the real Genesis controller and the card slot. So this is really a Genesis with an emulator in it. It's, it, 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 it's, or I don't know, it's, it's it, exactly what's in it. It's an emulator to play the carts, whatever. It's cool because it plays the carts and everything. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. What I might do with this, all right, so I've got a couple of things, a couple of ideas or whatever. Now, this giant thing is designed to hold, I mean, look at this. I'm almost, I'm almost up to a half an hour here, so. Supposed to tend to, now, of course, a 15 volt battery that has whatever, uh, so I forgot. 10 D cell batteries would end up being like 3,500 milliwatt amps. Uh, so, or milliwatt hours, it's, it's not hardly anything. So, we could just put a battery pack in there. Now we've got a lot of room in here to do anything we want. Um, like maybe rip out the guts and put this Genesis right in here. And then this could just be the supersonic Genesis TV. That's a possibility. The other thing is that, all right, so it's got, and I haven't opened this up yet, so I'm not sure what it's going to look like on the inside, but it's got um, AM, FM, TV, and then AV. So AV is obviously this, and I've used that, and it works, so that's great. Um, so this is the TV tuner, and I'm not sure, but, like, that's a second, that's its own thing on the, on the switch, and I wonder if I can... All right, so I've got two things going. I want to have a digital TV tuner coming to see if maybe I can hack that into there somehow. I'm not sure how that works, but if I, 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 I'm not sure how the video signal processes or whatever. That might be stupid. Uh, it might be stupid to do this. I may only have the one composite to be able to composite things into, but either way, um, that's that's the thing. We're going to be sticking some stuff in here. And, and if this monitor, I haven't opened it up, so I don't know what's back here in this big bubble to see if we have more room. But if that monitor ever blows, then we'll just slap a slap a new new one in there. Um, that's just one. Of, that's my. That's got to be my my favorite uh, favorite find for the whole time. Am I autofocus off or something? Did that one? Hell, oh, hi. I don't know. Stabilizer autofocus on. I don't know. Something happened, and my camera doesn't like me anymore. But that's okay. Um, Oh, pseudo autofocus. Huh. Yeah, there it goes. Sorry that you've been blurry for the past 10 minutes listening to me ramble. So that's the other, that's the other project. Um, and then the last project I have, and I don't have a visual for it, is that I'm going to be taking out a JVC tape deck, a dual tape deck. There's a lot of room inside it, and I'm going to stick an amp, a Bluetooth, an auxiliary jack, and uh, a selector. And so you'll be able to play tapes, uh, record tapes from your Walkman or, or from your iPod or, or your, your iPod or your, your phone because you'll be able to plug it in and be able to record is that'll be the input line like that. And then we'll have a switcher and you'll be able to just plug your speakers into the back because it'll be amplified and have an amplifier in it too. And that is the last thing that I'm going to be working on. So I got a lot of things going on in the shop. There's a lot of things that's happening. Um, also, eventually, we haven't forgot about Mr. Super Radio down at the, down at the end there. You see him peeking out past the tape deck. He's got a problem, and I think it's a voltage drop because I think uh, those batteries don't, I don't know. I gotta look, I gotta figure it out. I think it's a power issue with the, to the Bluetooth, so maybe I just gotta rewire that differently and we'll figure it out. But that's the other thing. So, all right, well, hey, look what we did. We did a 25 minute uh, thing about everything around here. So we kept it under a half an hour and I'm sure nobody's gonna make it through the whole time. Um, nobody's really watching anyway, so this is just an indulgement for me. But maybe someday, We'll go back and look and start and look at all the videos from that awesome guy that does all those videos and look and see, oh, look at his first videos. They were really crappy. But I just want to document a little bit of my journey on to get into what I'm getting into because I think it's really interesting. And I've been really inspired by people watching YouTube videos, so I think I need to share what I'm doing in my workshop back out, even if it's garbage, because you know what? I'm not polished. I'm not doing this properly really uh, I'm just learning as I go and I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes I'm gonna do a lot of things unconventionally just because I don't know that I can't do it so sometimes that's good and I'm gonna to try to be as creative as I can and and I've got some visions and uh, overarching the whole thing is you know let's 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 get some use out of our old technology let's update our old stuff so it works and let's not throw it out though because sometimes most of the time it works better still so until next time Gobble, gobble.